Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to talk about combo box. In our previous video, we talked about uh, various Java GUI components and today we will discuss combo box. By definition, a combo box is a graphical user interface that you can use in Java. And it is a combination of controls such as text boxes and drop down lists. So that's what I'm going to show you in this particular video. I will show you how to create that and also how to add your combo box to a frame. My project here is structured this way. I have created a class that I called my frame and that class is extending or inheriting from the JFrame class. I have my main class as usual here and in the main class I'm creating my frame here with this line of code. And the frame is an object of type my frame because my frame is a class that is inheriting the properties and the methods from the JFrame class, which is used to create a frame in Java GUI. So let me come back to the my frame class. And as you can see here, I have in my frame and I have a constructor. And inside the constructor, I am declaring the various attributes of my frame. So I have a title, I have the location, I have set the layout to flow layout. I have this method, the pack method, which is going to make sure that the size of the frame will adjust to the size of the components. And I have the set visible here to make the frame visible whenever I run my program. So the first thing we will do is that we are going to create our combo box. So in order to create a combo box, we use a Java class called J combo box. So I'm going to create this particular Gooby component globally. So I'm going to do that outside of the constructor. This is going to be the declaration of the combo box component. And now we'll call this combo underscore box and then semicolon. I need to import the combo box class like this. So now in a constructor, I'm going to instantiate my combo box. So I will say combo underscore box assignment of operator new j combo box. Okay, so that's the combo box that I have just created. Next, I'm going to add this particular combo box to the frame. So you know how to do that. I will say this, that add okay, combo underscore box and then semicolon. So now, how do we do if we want to populate our combo box? Before I do that, let me first run and see what has actually happened to the frame. So as you can see, we are having a combo box showing on the frame, but nothing is inside. We need to populate the combo box. So as I told you, a combo box is a combination of a text box and then a drop down list. And as you can see here, when you click on this arrow button here, normally a drop down list is supposed to appear, but we have to populate that. So one way to populate the combo box is to use an array. So we are going to declare an array of uh, a string array that will say string square brackets and I can choose, you know, whatever I want. So I'm going to say fruits. So that's going to be the name of the array fruits. And then I will open the curly braces. And then inside those curly braces, I can add in my array items. So the first one I will call is orange. The second string item, I will say banana and then mango. And I need a fourth one, I will say Apple. So that's how you create an array. And as we said, in order to populate the combo box, we will use this particular array. So the only thing we are going to do is to pass the name of the array to the combo box. So you come to your combo box constructor where you instantiated it, and we will simply write fruits like this. So this fruits here is making reference to the array we just declared and instantiated. So let me run. Okay, now you can see that on our frame, we are having a combo box. And when you click, now you have a drop down list, all right? So that's how you can create a combo box and then populate the combo box using an array. So what if we wanted to pass a string 
of integer numbers. And let's say that I would comment this like this and remove this from uh, the combo box constructor and say integer. This would not normally work, but uh, I'm just showing you. So now I will put some array inside like this. And if I pass this array, and now you can see we are having an error. So it's saying remove argument to match J combo box. So if you create uh, an array of integer numbers and then pass it directly like this to your J combo box as an argument or as a parameter, it will not work because with the J combo box, we necessarily have to pass in reference data type. But as you know, int here is a primitive data type. So for us to be able to pass integer to integer values or integer numbers to our combo box, we have to use the wrapper class version of the integer data type. And that wrapper class version is by simply writing integer starting with a capital letter like this. Now, when I write integer in full, starting with a capital letter, you can now see that we don't have an error any longer. And if I run, my combo box is indeed working and I can actually see the numbers, the integer values in the combo box. We can also try another primitive data type. Let's say uh, we say float because this is a primitive data type and number, for example, we'll pass in decimal numbers. So say 1.4, we'll say 2.8, for example, we'll cast that, add cast float. So to make sure that these are float numbers. And now you see, we still have the error, but if I write float with capital letter to make reference to the wrapper class version of the float data type. Now we don't have any error any longer. So that's that's actually the trick. If you wanna pass in integer numbers, you actually need to use the wrapper class version of your primitive data type. It was working with string because the string is not a primitive data type. String data type is actually a reference data type. So that's why it works directly with that. All right, I will remove, I will simply comment this line also, remove the comment from the string, the array of strings, and I will add it here. So this is how you populate your combo box. One more time, when I run, now you can see my frame containing the combo box. And when I click on the arrow button, I have my drop down list. So now we are going to use the action listener interface and that will allow us to check and determine item that has been selected from the combo box. So we wanna make sure that when the user clicks on uh, an item from the list, it should output a certain result. All right, so for that, we need to add the action listener interface. So we will add it here. We will say implement action listener. We need to import the action listener class as usual. We also need to add an implemented method. So that's the action performed method. So we need to add the action listener to the combo box. So this is gonna make sure that the combo box is actually gonna listen to the event. So that will be combo underscore box that add action listener. And then we will pass in the argument that this in reference to class that we are finding ourselves in. So now in the action performed method, we are going to define the action that needs to happen here. We are having our action event. We can choose to call it EVT just for, for it to be more explicit. So here we will say if the event source is, is the combo box, we called combo underscore box. Now in the curly braces, we are going to say string str combo underscore box. We will use a method called get selected item. So this is going to return the selected item. Uh, I will 
put this directly inside a system that out of print line. So I'll say system that out that print line like this. That will be a lot more simple. So now when we run our program and let's say that I want to select a particular item from the list, I will select mango for example now you can see in the console mango is appearing so the get selected item will actually get the item and then return it and also note here that because we added the action listener to the combo box that's why we definitely want to specify the source of the action to be the combo box here so now the combo box will be able to listen and make sure that this particular line of code is executed or uh, another thing that we can do here instead of selecting or returning the name of the item that has been selected we can return the index of the item that has been selected so for that we will use the get selected index okay now we will say instead of get selected item we simply say get selected index like this so now when i run Okay, I see my combo box. And let's say that I want to select Apple. Now you can see it returns three. The first item is at the index position of zero. The second is at index position one. The third is at index position two. And then the fourth is at index position three. That's why when you click on Apple, you get three as the index position of that particular item. What if I click on Mango, you get two in the console as you see banana is one and orange is actually zero so we have the get selected item we get the get selected uh, index which returns the index of the combo box item there are various things that we can also do various methods that we can apply to the combo box let's say for example that we want to know the number of items uh, contained in our combo box. We can use a particular method called get item count. So I will simply come here in the system that out that print line and inside the brackets, I will say combo box that get item count like this. So now when I run, I'm supposed to get four just to show you. So I will click on uh, a particular item. So now you can see four here. So this four is actually returning the number of items contained in our combo box drop down list. We can also, let's say that we want to add an item to the combo box by using the method add item. Okay, so we will come here in the constructor, for example, and simply say combo underscore box that add item and then we will say guava because we just want to add some fruits so when i run and then you can see guava has been added at the end of the list so we can also choose to add a particular item at a specific index position let's say that we will add another item and we will also determine its position so that will be index item at two. We need to pass two parameters or two arguments. The first one will refer to the item and then the second one would refer to the index position. So here I'm going to pass a string. I will say watermelon and I want to insert it at the index position two. So normally when we run and look at the drop down list in our combo box, Watermelon must be the third item because we said index position to here. So let me increase the frame like this. And now when I click here, now you can see I'm having watermelon as the third item in my combo box drop down list. So we can also set a default selected item based on a specific index number. So let me show you what I mean by that. As you can see, when we run our program by default, orange is the default selected item because it's actually the first item in our drop down list. It's the item at index zero that is by default selected. But we can actually change that. We can actually tell our program to select by default uh, any other item from the drop down list. So we will use that particular item, index position. So how do you do that? 
we will simply come here in our constructor and say combo underscore box that set selected index. And then we can pass in, let's say index two. And here we know that index two is watermelon because we added it at the index two position. So now let's check that when we run, now you can see watermelon is now the item selected by default because we defined it here using the set selected index. So what if we want to be able to edit the value in our combo box? We can use the set editable method. So combo underscore box that set editable to true. So this parameter would either be true or false. It's a Boolean parameter. So now let's check that. Let me run. So you can see our combo box item is now editable. I can actually delete, I can type in here. And as I told you at the beginning, the combo box is actually a combination of a text box and then a drop down list. Here you can select Apple and then edit it. And as you could notice, so by default, the combo box is not editable, okay? The set editable method is false. We can also say that we want to remove an item from our combo box. So we say combo underscore box that remove item. And then we will say watermelon. So now if you run, so the watermelon has been removed from our drop down list. I can also show you how to set the selected item. The first one I showed you how to select, uh, to set the selected item based on its index. Maybe if we try to select it directly, so we will say combo box that set selected item and let's say Apple like this and then run. Now you can see Apple is the selected item by default. We can also choose to remove a, an item based on its index position. So let's say for example, we want to remove the item that is positioned at the index one. So we say combo underscore box that set, uh, this will be remove, remove item at, and inside the brackets, we need to specify the index. So we will say one. And now when we run, now you see we don't have banana anymore because banana was positioned at index one, but because of this line of code, you know, the program has removed it. And um, another thing that we can do, we can definitely say, oh no, we want to remove all the items from our combo box. And then simply say, remove all items. And then semicolon, run. Now you can see nothing showing in our combo box drop down a list. All right, so there are various methods that you can actually use and then manipulate your combo box. So for this video, that was it. Combo boxes, how to create them using J combo box in Java GUI. And I hope this video was informative. Please don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in another video.